Observance night, half moon, going on towards new moon. Next week is the new moon night. This is the last, what is it, the the 7th of February? This is the only event of February 1991. And it's all, and it will be over at midnight. There will be never again another 7th February 1991. Each day is completely unique in itself. It is like yesterday, February 6th, 1991. There will never be another one in your, your life ever again. Completely unique. Each day goes by. And each day is totally unique. And they all pass. And then when you get old, you just, they just, they even speed up. So life is like this. Remember when we began this retreat, we, we are accepting the all possibility, all that happens is a part of our practice. There's nothing that happens during this retreat that is not part of our practice of Dhamma. It's all reflection, recognition of all that is subject to arising, is subject to ceasing, recognizing that that we can't find any kind of eternal soul or personal essence in any of these conditions. And that I am emphasize this is for investigation, not for belief. Uh, you're trying to find something uh, then you will you always be looking for you're always looking around for something an object to find or discover how many of you have been bitterly disappointed in this retreat because you haven't been able to find something find that your real self or that that which knows how, how many of you want to find the one who knows where is it you know, and you keep looking. Uh, maybe if I sit long enough or practice hard enough, I'll suddenly find it. I'll suddenly awaken to that ultimate reality. And that very desire is the obstacle, isn't it? That desire, that assumption. We're working with the immediacy of the desires that, that even motivate us into practicing meditation, becoming Buddhist monks and nuns. Some of you look pretty glum and miserable because you you don't know how to let go of anything. You're just so obsessed with yourselves. You think about yourself all the time, and you and it's a create problem. You go around and around with all your with all these thoughts and views and things. You never transcend it. Become so interested, so centered on yourself. And there isn't any self. But you, you get caught in that pattern. That's the abhicca bhajaya sankara, sankara bhajaya vinyanang, and so forth. Sometimes it weighs just a, a sigh of relief. Just nothing to do, nowhere to go, nothing to become. Just here and now. And yet, you can create all kinds of problems about this monk, this nun, this lay person, the sangha, the community, Amravati, Buddhism, Theravada, Christianity, the world. And all this is just the, the proliferation, conceptual proliferation, the papancha of a mind that is caught in ignorance, avicca, and then the Bhajaya Papancha, Sankaras, in this proliferation, which are absolutely uh, without any essence, any substance, anything real, they're just figments of the mind, phantoms, specters. Tis we who lost in stormy visions keep with phantoms an unprofitable strife, and in mad trance strike with our spirit's knife in vulnerable nothings. That's what you're doing. And in mad trance strike with your spirit's knife 
invulnerable nothings. And then you go around blaming people, making all kinds of somethings out of nothings. Now, weather is this way, isn't it? This is just uh, the the experience of cold and <coughs> snow and ice and and all that that brings. Being born means that we're subjected to the changing conditions of of the weather on this planet. This is just life. Life is like this. The uh, human form with its sensitive nature and its feeling, it's going to feel cold when it's like this. It, this is what cold feels like. It's inconvenient, isn't it? It's not convenient. The snow it gets in the way and the ice uh, kind of freezes the plumbing and and it's just terribly inconvenient for us. It gets in the way of practice. If we could only create a, an environment where there is, is a, it, you know, we get this perfect uh, lifestyle with no inconveniences. But being if being born means that we're going to be subject to inconvenience, it's just part of the part of the package. You get born, you're going to have a life of, filled with inconveniences, frustrations, irritation. Why do you think you shouldn't? What is so special about you that you think life shouldn't be inconvenient or irritating for you when it is for everyone? Being born is, is this, it's this way. It's filled with this, this kind of experience. So we reflect, we, we, we bring into our consciousness that life, this is what life is, what being born is about. Being born is, is, if we weren't born, we wouldn't be experiencing the cold. But because we're born, we have this body that's going to get cold when it snows and freezes and things like this. It's not Britain's fault, is it? We'll blame it on Britain. Wish we were one was in Tahiti and all this is, is just the, the silliness of a human mind. This is life. It feels like this. We're going to be irritated by each other and we're going to experience the ups and downs, highs and lows, elations, depressions of a sensitive situation. It's just the way it is. But the refuge isn't in high or low, is it? It's in knowing. It's in this cool, aware knowing of Dhamma, the Buddha seeing the Dhamma. Some of you see things in a very shallow way still. You're not, there's not much depth in how you interpret your experience. It's still very, uh, on a very kind of superficial level because you, you don't, you don't really investigate. You more or less form opinions. <coughs> Easy to just, just form opinions about things than to really investigate, to look into like the the pattern, all the, uh, the conditioned and the unconditioned, the born and the unborn. That that's a pattern. That is a reference <coughs> point. That is something to investigate. But how many of you still have minds of, uh, you know, like the he hurt my feelings and she doesn't love me anymore and. And I'm upset because he thinks that I said that she thought because they weren't exactly sure about what that other person was saying when when she was telling him about that incident that happened <laughs> ten years ago. <laughs> and then the old gossipy do you know what, what I heard today? Do you know who has a crush on who? Do you know who has, has got eyes for who? And who heart, who, who goes a bit 
fluttery when so and so comes around, and all this is like, and really it's disgusting, like you're in seventh grade again. So we find out that emotionally maybe we aren't very mature, we aren't very developed. I mean, some some people even, you know, have gone through uh, universities and still emotionally on the on the heart level is still that le- you know that at that stage of of she loves me, she loves me not, kind of emotional plane. I'm kind of looking for for someone to to love me, someone to understand me, someone to nurture me, someone to to tell me what to do, someone to praise me, someone to appreciate me, somebody who will take care of me. Somebody who'll be my friend. How many of you want want a real close friend out of the song? Somebody, a special relationship like Margaret Thatcher has with Ronald Reagan. <laughs> Where does this come from? This desire to have special relationship, a meaningful uh, sharing, and uh, uh, you know a an intimacy in that with somebody else, even on a platonic basis in the Sangha, we can't get into an intimacy, uh, too much intimacy, without breaking the rules, but a certain level of favoritism and preference. But this is this also is quite natural. We certainly find affinities in preferring certain people over others is just the way it is. But we're here to see the Dhamma, not to not to develop this, not to make this into something. Not that's not what we're here for. That's not what we are expecting. That's not the way out of suffering. So we contemplate our own the way we react and uh, respond to the life that we're living here. We study it, we reflect on it, we learn from it. And from whatever, wherever we happen to be, on whatever, don't be, a, don't be frightened of your emotions, but just try to, to accept them and know them for what they are. Admit them into consciousness. So we're not trying to act like mature monks and nuns and and uh, and suppress our feelings. But in this life, we can at least allow the the emotional nature, when in its in its uh, immaturity in that, to be a consciously experienced, because it's when we allow these fears and desires, emotional <clears throat> conditions into consciousness that we can uh, understand them, understand them as dhammas. When you understand something, then you can let it go. When you let it go, then you realize the, the uh, cessation. And when you realize the cessation of a condition, then you realize, then you have that insight into the Eightfold Path. It is an ongoing uh, and determined effort we have to apply because we, it takes time to release. It's not you're going to suddenly have a big catharsis and then transformed overnight into this totally kind of uh, balanced, mature, wise, uh, compassionate creature. One can have insights, but but still it takes time to wear away, to let go and to realize cessation from coarse to the more subtle.